of Cayman Arts Festival has opened up new possibilities. It's given me a choice into what I want to become. It's given me an opportunity to pursue something that I really like doing. Back in about 2001-2002, Glenn Inanga and Jennifer McAuliffe visited the Cayman Islands and put on a concert as duet pianists. I had the opportunity to be able to go and see them, and they were just absolutely phenomenal. The response was incredibly overwhelming. Jennifer was amazed. This was her first visit, and she decided as soon as we'd left Cayman, we were on tour in Edinburgh in Scotland, and she said, Glenn, I know the best response to Cayman asking us to come back every single time, is to start a festival. At the time, it was really something quite new, I think, in Cayman. First of all, I think it was quite a new thing for them to have two piano concerts, but also it was quite, um, quite new that they had um, um, concerts on the island. At least that's the impression I got from various people. The interesting thing was at the time, the, the people actually who came to speak to me were kept on telling me, we'd love to have more of this, we're desperate to have more culture, more and more concerts and so on. And so I went back to London um, and just with a lot of energy, with a thinking about doing something um, in the Cayman Islands, just because I enjoyed it so much, but also because I really felt that there was really a need. So I um, grabbed Glenn by the neck, he had no choice at the time, and uh, we really discussed it at length. We had made some contacts, we started calling them, people from various companies, and the response was immense. Jennifer and Glenn had this vision of wanting to put on a full-blown Cayman Arts Festival with the view of bringing really entertaining, enriching, and educating in the field of performing arts, and more specifically uh, for music. There wasn't a lot of classical music that was available then, as well as live jazz, etc. But it started really with just classical music and searching out with Jennifer and Glenn's contacts. They were able to really, and continue, to be able to bring in some really good um, acts uh, for the festivals year after year. I think it's great for uh, a community of our size to have exposure and access to world-class talent. I think it's just tremendous. I remember going to speak to the then um, Minister of Education and Minister of Culture, Roy Bodden, and I said to him, I know you guys are about to sort of discuss this in Cabinet, but I really hope this is something that will, give, that will have your support as Minister. And he actually said, I have absolutely no problems with it. You know, this is something we don't already have on the island, and I would like this to see something like this happen. So once we got that you know, green light from you know, the government at the time, we decided that it was definitely something that we would pursue. So we basically went with a blank sheet of paper with an idea to lots of different corporate um, sponsors on the island and asked them, would you be interested in sponsoring these different acts? We had a small budget, so we really had to find a way to actually use Glenn and me as pianists, as founders, as sponsors, a bit of everything, and try and find ways to practice. And the idea was actually to integrate professional musicians coming from outside Cayman with local musicians. So we got the local orchestra, we got the local choir to take part, and Wayne Marshall was already quite a well-known um, international musician, conductor. He, he says to this day that he has never felt anything like what happened on that night. I think we had over a thousand people, and, and the response at the end was just, I mean, it still gives me a cold feeling. You know, it, it gives me this feeling of excitement. It was unbelievable. And I think that that was particularly memorable as it was an occasion where we saw both children and adults from the Cayman National Orchestra, from the Cayman National Choir, from various schools also get together with international singers and musicians and then be conducted by Wayne Marshall, who's a well-known uh, conductor and choir master. So it was just such an amazing opportunity for both the participants and also for the audience as well. Our original vision for it was to be the only festival of its kind in the Caribbean. And I think we can proudly say we still have that reputation. And it's almost a festival like no other one that I have come across anywhere in the world because of the way it combines education as well as international events. 
The idea we actually had at the beginning was international artists come here, interact with the local artist. That, in a sense, gives the local artist something to, you know, to work with, so that when the international artists leave, they leave something behind that helps to grow what we're doing here on the ground. When you look back at the, the early days of the festival, it's quite extraordinary to see how it has matured as an event, uh, but also how the audiences have matured in their appreciation of the works that are performed. And I think that any society needs to be able to express itself uh, confidently, and that's uh, a part, part of understanding oneself as, as well. And um, one also needs to be able to appreciate and interact with the expressions of other cultures and other points in history. And over the time that the, the festival has been running, uh, the level of confidence in that sort of process has, has, uh, has been very, very discernible. And we're delighted as a, as a firm to, to play a, a role in supporting that and um, developing that maturity and developing that engagement, that cultural engagement. And that is kind of how we began to flesh out our original objectives of trying to educate, uh, incorporate music education on, you know, into the island. And so that's kind of how our after-school program has been born. I didn't, I didn't think it would be this massive. I didn't realize it would require so many resources. So I'm really pleased, very humbled by it uh, in particular. I'm humbled by what can happen when the community comes together and decides that they want to have something that is way bigger than the sum of the parts. Raising enough funds from these events, uh, Cayman Arts Festival um, was able to uh, build the after-school program that we have. We have at this moment four or five years with the after-school program and in my opinion the educational program start putting in the shade the entertainment part because it, it grew up so much from I recall eight cellos, eight violins, that means 16 kids, right? Up to I have now in my inventory more than 120 violins, more than 40 cellos, a few pianos including a grand piano, brass instruments, woodwind instruments, came on youth choir that was split it in two so we talk about 200, 250 students, and I'm not sure if somebody anticipated initially this explosion of students coming to us. Approximately four years ago, I had some time on my hands, and I was really wanted to get the instrumental program going again in the primary schools because there had been a lapse and a lack of teaching of instrumental. And so I went to the various primary schools and started doing some morning sessions, particularly at Savannah and Georgetown and East End and Northside. And then I really needed some help with this. So I went to Glenn and said, look, we are doing this in the primary school. This should be a Cayman Arts Festival project. This is something which Cayman Arts could take on board, working with the gifted and talented students and giving them opportunities. In 2006, the Garden Opera came and performed La Boheme, but there is a cafe scene where we needed 20 to 40 young kids to be in the scene and to sing and what have you. We held open auditions and every single child um, actually got a part uh, and they sang. It was, it was absolutely phenomenal. It was held out at Pedro's Castle. What really touched my heart was that these were kids that came from all the public schools, from West Bay Primary, Georgetown Primary, and the private schools as well. So they all came together. And then there was an older Caymanian lady who said, this is absolutely wonderful. I have never seen these kids coming from public sector schools and private schools come together like this. He said, this is absolutely wonderful. So that was an inspiration then to actually start off. And from that initial little chorus, the National Youth Choir was born and they continued to to uh, sing and perform t to this day. I'd like to see more kids involved. We do go out to all of the different schools and you know there's a lot of different logistics in terms of having kids coming from all of the different schools but you know I'd love to see more kids in that program develop. There's you know 200 plus students in the program, uh, several hundred uh, instruments that are owned by the program and, and what's important there is the fact that the students in this program are taking these instruments home. Uh, a lot of the programs within the schools 
um, you know, where there are, the students cannot afford their own instrument. They're loaned to them by the school and these instruments will spend the evening in, in a locker at the school um, where the students don't have an opportunity to, to practice. We find the children that uh, are gifted and are keen and enthusiastic and want to do this and we put an instrument which is of good quality into their hands so they can actually use it. The Cayman Arts are the ones which are holding the instruments. This is not something where the child has to give the instrument back in the holiday and it goes in the cupboard or they move school and suddenly they don't have an instrument to play. The beauty here is that the children are just tagged all the way through and we can follow their progress and support them in every single way that we can. Not just by providing an instrument, but by providing lessons, summer camps, opportunities to perform in ensembles, orchestras, opportunities to go to concerts and meet professional musicians. And all of those things are what make up the, a, a musician. Every time Cayman Arts brings a group down here, we try and have workshops for the children. Anything that's going on in Ireland, we try to include the children and we look for performance opportunities for them, which are real performance opportunities. Like for instance, last year, they played at the National Heroes event where they, they did a Caymanian song. We played at the CUC 50th anniversary. We've played at Cayman National Bank's Christmas. All sorts of events like that where we feel that the children it's going to mean something to them, it's something important. We want them to look back and say, well, I played at that, I can do this, I can do anything, I can conquer the world. All of those educational programs, I think, are just so critical to the development of our youth. And that was, you know, in, in my mind, helped to inculcate a, uh, an appreciation for the, you know, the different types and, and uh, of musical genres. At RBC, we definitely want to make an impact in the communities where we do business. At the time when we were funding this program, the focus was on youth. What resonated with us really was the fact that the target students at the time didn't have exposure to music. The schools were cutting music programs. We were really proud of the fact that this program came in and filled a void. But the children are here because they want to be here. And what is very interesting, that it, in the original group of students that um, we had been working with from year five, the violinists and cellists that came up from Georgetown and Savannah particularly, every single one of them is still playing. Every child is still playing and every child is really enthusiastic. They are here every day after school, they will be here. He was always one of those children that, that pushed you. He's one of these kids who, when he has a challenge, will rise to it. And he practices and he's, he's just a great kid. This is a kid that was just a gifted kid and just needed an outlet. And he is going to be a fantastic violinist. He, he practices, he, he looks at everything. What do I need to do here to, to improve this? How am I going to um, learn the scale passage? What do I have to do to get better? And that, at his age now, I think he's 11, is great. We assume always that talent comes from elsewhere. We always assume that homegrown is not as good. But I tell you, we have some amazing children who are very, very talented. And when you give them the opportunity, they run with it. I've listened in to some of these programs where they've got groups uh, doing the same kind of thing as we are in other parts of the world. And our kids sound just as good, if not better. with passion about giving opportunities to these children but you have to come and see for yourself come and visit one of the classes and that way you can see the kind of passion that the kids have how much they achieve and how this is something which doesn't just touch on their ability in music this is something listening understanding this is something for everything that they do in life the arts festival um, has got to the point whereby it's identified talent 
um, that the island can't do any more for in terms of them living here and studying here. They've reached a very high level, but they're not in the company of their peers who are playing to the same level, if not higher. And some of the things that we're very pleased about is a scholarship fund that we've established for students to go and attend a music camp in New York State, which I went to when I was a teenager, transformed my life. It's called Luzerne Music Center. It's actually run by the, uh, the red violinist who we had earlier, Elizabeth Pitkin. She's the president and CEO. She and I were campers together, and she actually understands what that organization can do. And so we've established this partnership with them where we sponsor a student to go out there and um, have that opportunity. We would love to extend that to many more students. You know, we now see the impact it has on them when they come back. They now get it in a way that they couldn't understand from their teachers or from me trying to explain to them, you know, this is why you should practice. This is what you can be. This is what you can do. Before I went away to Luzerne, I kind of had a set vision of what I wanted to do in the future, but after traveling to Luzerne and meeting all other musicians around the world that shares the same passion as me, it has very much opened my eyes a lot and now I really want to be a part of an orchestra when I grew up. Going there, it really creates a very much life-changing moment because of the people you meet, the classes that you attend, and just having to feel the same amount of love for music that you share with everyone else. The Cayman Arts Festival decided that it was not going to duplicate anything already happening on the island. I always said, whatever is happening on the island is fantastic. Whatever we are going to do is going to plug for gaps in the cultural fabric that needed to be plugged. Um, so we decided that we would bring up you know, acts on the island that you know, people who fit what we are trying to do here, people who understand what it is that the Arts Festival is trying to do through education. So who will come down here, who are very flexible, who are easy to work with, who, are, who love education, who love working with students, who feel very inspired by working with students, and whom the students can connect with. So for example, we brought the harpist down earlier, Catherine Finch. We'd never had a harp recital on the island before. And she's a classical harpist, was the royal harpist um, for you know, His Royal Highness, the Prince of Wales, um, in, from 2000 to 2004. But she's such a wonderful ambassador for the instrument. Um, and we felt that she would be somebody who can really demonstrate to the kids what the instrument can do. So the education component of what she did was amazing, not just for the students, but for the general public who were able to come and hear her perform. <music> It's not just about the harp, it's, it's more about the fact that you're introducing music to them and you're introducing something new and you're saying this is a whole music world ahead, of, you know, in front of you guys and you can experience it as and when and even if, if it's just to enjoy listening. You know, when you think of performers such as Catherine Finch, the international harpist, we had the Juilliard Jazz Ensemble here and I know that they both got time with the kids and to, uh, you know, to expose them to, to their music. I just think it's, it's fantastic. Great opportunity to get the kids involved and exposed to this caliber of, uh, of uh, musicianship. I mentioned that we've had the Magnets, a wonderful a cappella group. We've brought down String Fever twice now. String Fever were fantastic. They a string quartet, a traditional string quartet playing on electronic instruments, but they had their own arrangements. And twice they came down here, they were a huge success. The first time they came, they went to Cayman Brack. And apparently there were problems getting one of the instruments down. They had to ride by helicopter, apparently, the cello. String Fever are great. They're very down to earth, very easy to work with, um, loved coming here. And they got to the Brack after, before their performance in Grand Cayman. They got to the Brack and, you know, they were performing for these kids. And as soon as they started playing, the kids sat up and they said, goodness me, what's this? And it was a humongous success at the Aston Rutty Center. This was back in 2006. Um, phenomenal success. And they came down here, packed out the First Baptist Church, you know. They did the most phenomenal thing. So we had them back about four years later. And again, packed again. They had a completely different set to perform. People were completely amazed by the virtuosity of these, these players, but how accessible they made the instrument to many, many people. People, in a sense, here in Cayman like that kind of personal connection. They enjoy that. We had Elizabeth Pitkin with her red violin. Met her as a teenager. She now plays the most famous violin in the world. And of course, the recital was phenomenal. 
wonderful educational event. You know, people could actually see, you know, why her violin is so famous. You know, she explained that entire world that is completely foreign to us in a sense. Foreign to many students, they couldn't understand how an instrument like that could be 300 years old and incredibly valuable. Um, and again, for them to understand the story behind the instrument and, you know, how it's gone through um, to get into her hands today. And the, the actual movie, The Red Violin, that was centered around this particular um, instrument itself. Again, for the Cayman, that was the first. Um, and things like that, I think, help the festival to be the unique festival that it is today. Music on the menu, which we've um, had in various venues, primarily here at Luca. The idea came from Babs and Simon ba um, Barwick. They ran BBMP. In fact, they, they gave the Cayman Arts Festival the branding it's actually got today. They, they managed the brand development for the, for the festival. And they decided that it was a good idea to have more awareness for the Cayman Arts Festival. Because many people thought, think of the festival every two years and then they forget, they move on to other things. And then you have to ramp things up again every two years, you know, to try and get you know, people to know what the festival is about. And they said, you need to keep this going. So you can have a series of events where people can come, they have dinner um, after a wonderful little concert. And it's something that just, you only need to have two or three a year. And it's something that will build awareness. You, don't, you, know, you won't raise that many funds, but you know, this is something that will help people remember the Cayman Arts Festival right through the year. So we decided that it was going to be just local artists. Um, it's primarily classical music that's performed, classical chamber music um, that's performed. We have opportunities for many of the resident performers on the island. So we have a lot of people who are teachers on the island, but are wonderful performers in their own right, who come together and you know, they share their love of music. They share the repertoire that they particularly love playing. They choose their repertoire. I think for local performers, any opportunity to be exposed, any opportunity to perform, is an opportunity to learn and to grow. Um, and I feel particularly if these local performers are given a chance to be heard by audiences who wouldn't normally get to hear them because they perhaps are performing in a different context, um, I think it's great for them. But in addition to that, I'll give you another example. Um, at many of our fringe events, we have some of our local performers interacting with international performers. A simple example of that was a National Gallery event we had. And we had one of my students, Erica Rocket Bean, performing, you know, she's a wonderful singer, unique voice, um, performing with, alongside Boz Cali, And on the spot, they decided to put something together. And seeing something like that come together, for my students in particular, working with somebody of that caliber, she was like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I said, just do. Just sit there and see what happens. I know what your talent is able to do on the spot. And of course, that goes into her whole repertoire of experiences that helps to make her the person that she is today. That's kind of what the Cayman Arts Festival is about. Again, giving them opportunities, giving them chances to perform, giving them chances to interact with people like this. That's going to, in a sense, enrich their whole development as they grow. developed a, a really nice relationship with the Juilliard School over the years and one act was a, a group of opera singers um, and they were just fantastic. They, they sang beautifully and they did a workshop and they went to John Gray High School and the reaction between the, the powerful voices and these kids that couldn't believe the sound was coming from a single person it was great, it was lovely to see it. They thoroughly enjoyed it. And at that point we had, I don't know, about five or six of the, the, the local schools all bringing their kids and they were practicing to perform with these opera singers. And it was, it was, that was very cool because it was what 
we felt that CAF was all about, um, which was bringing these international people to inspire our children, and that's what they did. We had five or six instructors, dance instructors, come down and work with the kids in the schools and put on a show with those kids at the end of a, a week long of workshops. And again, you know, that inspiration of international talent for all of the children on the Cayman Islands was, was um, fantastic. We thought if you bring violinists to the island, if you bring cellists to the island, if they see a cello being performed, if these guys do workshops and master classes with them, it would really help to stimulate that interest and give them that support and encouragement as they go on their journeys to try and play um, these instruments. And it's amazing, you can just see where things are headed. You have to catch them young, at the age of eight, age of seven, put an instrument in their hands, and give them a chance just to grow, give them all the support. They have absolutely no excuse not to develop because their, their tuition is you know, funded, the instruments are also funded, they don't have, really have to pay anything um, because we don't want to have any barriers to their development. And that's kind of something that gives me a lot of joy, it brings a lot of, um, it fills me with a lot of pride that you know, the Cayman Arts Festival is in the position to make a difference in such a way. I can project from five to 10 years and think, we are going to have the most amazing explosion on this island that many people haven't seen before. And we'll have our own junior orchestra performing really wonderful masterworks, you know, by Shostakovich, by Prokofiev, you know. They love it and they become totally absorbed by it. And I, I do think it's inspirational for them. And it makes some kids, if it just makes one kid, uh, pick up a violin or a trumpet or, or want to sing or want to dance and express themselves through the arts, then yeah, I think it's great. With the help of Cayman Arts, I've been able to attend multiple master classes, and these master classes are so vital because even if it isn't your instrument, you can still learn a whole lot. And one of the master classes or the sessions that I enjoyed the most is with the violinist Elizabeth Pitcairn. It was very nice to see how very involved she was with her instrument and how close she was with it. And that's also an important thing. You have to love what you do to get the most out of it. Master classes that mostly inspired me were the ones from Sheku and Sarah who are both amazing cellists and are pretty well known in like the musical kind of thing and they've inspired me to push on to become um, the best cellist that I can be. A big part of coming to do a concert obviously is the concert but it's also this other um, the other activities around it so that I can uh, make sure that you know I, I leave something hopefully and even if just one of the kids there today decided they wanted to play the harp then that would be my, my job done well. It's just important to introduce young people to music on all level and in all genres I think and um, for them to have that opportunity and um, for, for them to be able to choose and, and to learn to listen and appreciate music I think. I believe I really I firmly believe that performing arts is integral in any student's um, development. It brings discipline, it brings team playing, or you know, being a part of a team. With performing arts, there's the discipline of the rehearsal, especially in music. It enhances mathematics skills. The Cayman Arts Festival has been a big contributor in that regard. And kids' scores and their grades, they go up when they are involved in performing arts. We had challenges on, on both parts, entertainment and educational programs. So we just try to find a balance and to bring performers and to find events that will please everybody and will still keep somehow the cost certain level. Finding these funds has been a challenge. We have our own sponsors that they come on board most of the time and without them we, we can't do it. It's nice if you can have more uh, because all of them, they are connected here. Uh, without these events, we cannot bring on stage our students to perform. They usually open all the events that we have. And if we don't have the events, uh, we, can, we can't do anything with, uh, with them just practicing and maybe small events at the local level with limited audience. It's interesting when you have funds and you don't have enough teachers so this is a good sign at this moment. Uh, this is a good problem that we have uh, when uh, we have uh, 
a lot of uh, students, we have instruments, and now we need more teachers to come on board to help us. The idea really is we come together, we have synergies, we have lots of opportunities to collabor collaborate with them. And in a, in a sense, we're trying to build awareness right across the board. And when you're able to do that, it makes the entire island a lot stronger within the arts. Um, and as a result of that, you know, I think this is something that I think is, we're very proud of this relationships we've got with the Visual Arts Society, with the National Gallery, with the Cayman Drama Society, even with the Cayman National Culture Foundation as well. We've been involved in so many different ways. The Cayman Drama Society sponsors a lot of our Rising Stars events whenever we go to the Prospect Playhouse to perform with them. model that always works. Um, they get a platform to perform on. We have a chance to showcase to our audiences what they're doing as well. It's just a win-win situation for everybody involved. Putting on a, a festival is major and there's a lot of work and a lot of logistics that go into it. We do need to have the sponsors come on board so it's super important. None of this could happen. The youth programs couldn't happen. We get these wonderful musicians from all over the world that take the time out of their schedules and go into the schools to do master classes or to do performance. And it all takes money to be able to do this. You know, we have to hire the buses to bus the kids. It's, it's even more challenging because Cayman doesn't have a tax system where you can have tax deductions. So we really do have to rely a lot on the corporate sponsors to be able to make the program continue. We really thank them for their support. And they've been great and they have grown. We've got a wide cross-section of different sponsors, people who sponsor in kind, people who sponsor, you know, in cash, which is fantastic. People who you know, can only afford X amount, people who, who've got bigger budgets. We like people to feel through many people this can happen. So we, the more corporate sponsors we have, the better. We're not looking for just the one sponsor who's going to write a massive check. That's not the spirit of the festival. The festival is really about lots of different people feeling they've got ownership of this and giving a chance to say, hey, here's my contribution, you know, because we really believe in what you're doing. And that's something that I really feel very humbled by. Um, and then they get into the spirit of what they're trying to do and then you can spread your wings far and wide and reach out to more people because the more people who hear about this, the more people who sponsor, you know, the more people you're able, you're able to reach through this. I have a dream to see the Cayman Arts Festival have its own resident concert hall. Wouldn't it be fabulous if we had a concert hall that we would know 
not even just you know once a year, maybe three times a year we could be having major concerts. I think every country, and whether it's a small island or a big country, needs a concert hall. And I think this is where I'd like to see Cayman heading towards. To have a concert hall whereby you can also use this for conferences and other events and so on, it will, it will just be the cherry on the cake. But then you can really do a lot of work with orchestras, with choirs. I'm amazed that sometimes even the smallest village in, let's say, in Germany or the smallest village in Japan will have an amazing concert hall with acoustic, you know, fantastic facilities and so on. And this is what I think Cayman still lacks, if I may say. And if, I, if we have this, then that will be the next big stepping stone to really developing a fully fledged program. I think it can get bigger um, in terms of incorporating even more of the arts. I think we could strengthen our relationships with other organizations. Um, we could strength, strengthen our partnerships with um, organizations overseas as well. I can think of us getting much stronger, building new networks, building new partnerships, but perhaps with other sort of competitions overseas who have winners who are looking for opportunities to perform here as well, because we've always done that in the past. Hopefully we'll be able to have more orchestras coming here to perform. It's a very expensive thing to be able to do, but there are ways of getting it to happen. Um, and just making it even more accessible to a wider cross-section of people, making our ticket prices even lower, for example, to get even more people through the door. But for now, you know, we're very pleased and very encouraged, and we really appreciate all the support we have got from the wider, you know, wider community. I think it would be nice to, uh, to see some of the students that we have now in the program teaching in 10 years. All the time the dream was to have an orchestra, a youth orchestra. We just try to, to build up. We have uh, programs that uh, um, target now uh, um, kindergartens. And we hope that in 10 years, these uh, students from, these kids from kindergartens will be uh, able to, um, uh, to give us uh, a, nice, a nice feedback. Well, I think the one thing I would say is that the education component of the um, Kim and Arts Festival is extremely important to the success and to building on the programs that you have moving forward. Because I think once you can start to get, get the kids to um, embrace the various forms of music and, and, and you know playing the various instruments, that sort of stuff, then you're building up on a sustainability model. And that really is what will determine the success of something like the Arts Festival moving forward. So, I mean, I, I think keep building on that education program, keep spreading the wings within our schools and getting the kids involved. And I think that you will, you will see a, a program that flourishes in this country. You're about to see a phenomenal explosion. Um, these kids are no different to any other kids you'll find in the world, okay? I don't believe there's any difference in between children. Here in the Cayman Islands, in New York, in London, anywhere, at the end of the day, we are all the same. It's just a matter of exposure. It's all a matter of nurturing. It's a matter of support, encouragement, instilling the right values in them. And you will get exactly the same results as you get overseas. Absolutely no difference. That's my view.